Welcome to the workbench. I'm Doug. Today I'd like to show you how you can maintain your four thread serger in between its yearly visits to your baby lock retailer. So to begin, to make life a little bit easier for us, we want to raise the presser foot lever and detach the presser foot. And then we'll take our stitch length knob and position it from standard four thread to rolled edge. What this is going to do is get the stitch finger out of our way so you don't take a risk of bending it. The next step would be to lower your doors and remove this straight slot screw in the front of your needle plate. Next, with the Allen wrench provided with your machine, you want to remove the screw on the back side of your needle plate. Now, if you're not as comfortable removing the screw from the back side, you could always do it from the front side, where you would be able to get more rotation of the screw. But once you break the screw loose, because we don't have a lot of rotation, then you can use maybe a couple fingers to spin this away. We don't have a lot of range with that Allen wrench. But once that screw is removed, then you can lift up and detach your needle plate. And I'm sure that when you open up your machine, it's gonna have a little bit more lint and fuzz. This is a newer model that we're using for demonstration purposes. But lint and fuzz can really build up in a serger due to the fact not only do you have the lint coming from your thread, but you also have it coming from the fabric that you're trimming. So the next step would be to use some canned air. And keep in mind when you're using canned air, you don't want to lean or to shake the product as you may have some Freon escaping. So by holding it upright and using your air hose, you can safely remove any lint and fuzz from your machine. I hope you don't have too much of a mess on your floor after that. Now, other than just the looper area in your needle plate area, you'll also want to make sure that your tension unit, whether it be a tension with the knobs or if it's one with our thread delivery system. By raising and lowering the presser foot, it opens your disc for your thread to lay in. But sometimes you may get lint and fuzz in there restricting that pressure. So with the presser foot raised, your disc open, then come in with your compressor to blow within all of your fans. Easy, right? Okay, next, just kind of inspect your needle plate and then reposition it back into the machine by angling up on the right side a little bit to tuck it underneath your cover. Temporarily reinstall the screw in the back. And then again, as you put the front screw in, you can start it, but don't bear down on it real tight. Because the screw in the back has a little open position allowing for movement left and right, which is rare to find on a serger. But the benefit to you is the fact that we can adjust it so that when the needles come through the stitch fingers, it's not deflecting. So what you wanna do is rotate your hand wheel so that the needles come down through the needle plate and then position left and right to ensure the needles are in the center position. At that point, it may help you then to tighten your front screw to hold it into place. Reassure that they're in the center. Then you can tighten the screw in the back with your included Allen wrench. And then just re-ensure that the needle is going in the center of the stitch fingers. At that point, all you have to do is reattach your presser foot. And if you're going back to four thread surging, then your stitch length knob, you can then position back to your desired stitch length. Now, one thing you don't want to do is wait until your serger looks like this. 
<laughs> you don't want to see that. So I hope this was a little bit helpful for you. It will keep your machine in tip-top running shape in between its yearly visits. So now that you know, get out and search. 